Hey guys, and welcome back to the last video of this um, Spotify clone. So I hope you like this series so far. In uh, this video, we will implement the rest of the song fragment. So on the one hand, uh, that we can uh, toggle the play state there, that we can skip songs, and of course, that the seek bar works. We will start with the more, yeah, with the easier part, actually, um, that is toggling the play state and actually skipping songs and after that we will take a look at the seek bar stuff so inside of this on view created function in our song fragment we first want to set an on click listener to our iv play pause detail so you can see that comes from fragment song xml let's set on click listener make sure that the currently playing song is not equal to null and if it is not we will just use our main view model dot player toggle song we want to play it and we set toggle to true because yeah well we want to toggle it of course and skipping songs is actually even easier so on the one hand we want to use iv skip previous dot set on click listener and here we just use a main view model dot skip to previous song and an IV skip dot set on click listener. We do the same, just that we skip to the next song. And what we also want to consider here is um, that if we pause the, the song from our notification, we of course also want to update this image view, not only when we click on it. So instead of our subscribe to observers function we will add another observer here from main view model that playback state you also already know that so when the playback state changes we will also just update our image view accordingly so playback state that observe view lifecycle owner and in here we actually also want to have a global playback state variable as we also did in our main activities so let's create that up here private var playback state of type playback state compat and set it to null um, then we can set that playback state to it and set our iv play pause detail dot set image resource and here we just again we already did that in main activity. We just again want to check if the playback state question mark dot is playing, if that is equal to true. So if the player is just currently playing, then we don't need those curly brackets. We just want to set the image to r dot drawable dot ic pause because we are currently playing and else to r.drawable.ic play like this and we also want to update our seek bar actually when the playback state changes so seek bar dot progress is equal to it make a null check that position and convert that to an integer and if that is null we just set the progress to zero so as you can see, I already started to um, started with the seek bar stuff because with the play pause toggling and the skipping song stuff, we are actually done. So let's get to the seek bar stuff. For that, we will observe from our song view model this time, which we haven't used so far in this song fragment. So song view model dot current player position not observe your lifecycle owner and in here you can see we get a reference to the amount of milliseconds the player is currently at here we actually want to update our seek bar with this progress but we don't just want to write um, seek bar that progress is equal to it here instead we need to make sure that we actually want to update our seek bar because let's say the the player wants to seek by himself and he drags the seek bar a little bit then as 
then during the drag, we don't want to update the seek bar because then the seek bar value would just jump away. But um, the user wants to drag it in that moment. So what we need here is we need a public variable, a public boolean um, to if we actually want to update that seek bar. So private var should update seek bar. And we set that to true initially. So with this boolean, um, we will actually add the logic for that after writing this observer. With this boolean, we can now check if should update seek bar. If so, we want to update our seek bar progress. Seek bar progress is equal to it dot two integer and we not only want to update our seek bar progress, we also want to update our current position text view. So basically um, the current time of our player. And for that, I want to create a function because we will need that logic twice. Um, and I'll call that set current player time to text view. And here we can pass the amount of milliseconds we want to set to the text view. So we of course don't want to um, just set the amount of milliseconds to the text view. Instead, we want to format the time. And that's what will happen in this function. So let's, so we can create it down here. Private function set current player time to text view. Here we pass the milliseconds. And in this function, we can simply use a date format. So val date format, set that to a new simple date format from um, java.txt. You can always use that simple date format to just format time. If you have a time in milliseconds to format that to whatever kind of um, time pattern. So we can just use a time pattern here or specify a time pattern, which I will choose mm colon ss for. So two digits for the minutes and two digits for seconds. And we also want to pass a locale, just locale dot get default like this. And then we have our text view current time. We can set its text to date format dot format. And here we want to pass our milliseconds so that these milliseconds will be formatted in, uh, in this pattern basically and set to our current time text view here. Then uh, let's write our second observer here that comes from song view model, which is song view model dot current song duration for the other text view that just displays how long our song is. So that observe view lifecycle owner. And in here, once we get that value, we want to set the seek bar dot maximum value to this amount of milliseconds, so equal to it, and it dot to integer, by the way. And we also want to update the text view. So that will be very similar as here, but we want to update a different text view. So let's just copy this code here and paste it in this observer and instead change this text view to TV song duration. And here, instead of MS, we pass it like this. And that's already it for this observer. Okay, what is missing? Well, we need to write the logic for this should update seek bar boolean. So what should actually happen when the user drags on the seek bar so that we actually seek the currently playing song? We will not do that in this subscribe to observers function. Instead, in on view created, we will add an on seek bar change listener. So seek bar dot add or actually set on seek bar change listener. So every time the seek bar value changes, this listener will be called. And here we can pass an object colon on seek bar change listener. And we press control I to implement those three functions. We will actually need all of them on progress changed. So whenever the, the value of our seek bar changes, this function is called, then we have on start tracking touch. So this is called once the, the user 
starts the touch, starts the drag on the seek bar, and on stop tracking touch, well, when he stops the touch. So on the one hand, we want to go into on start tracking touch and set should update seek bar to false because during the drag, we don't want that other sources update our seek bar basically and change the value so that it would jump back. We don't want that, so we set the value to false here. Then in on stop tracking touch, so when the user releases the seek bar, uh, then we want to actually seek to that position in our song. So we get a reference to the seek bar here. We just use that reference seek bar and make a null check. So seek bar question mark that led. And now we want to use our main view model dot seek to. We, we want to seek to a position in long. And well, we just want to seek to the current progress of the seek bar because the user um, stopped the touch there. So seek to it dot progress dot too long. And we also want to set should update seek bar to true again because now the user basically left his hand. Now it's only on progress change left here. Well, when the user um, is dragging, then what do we want to do as long as he is dragging? We just want to update uh, the, the current time and set that to our text view so that the user actually knows at which um, timestamp he uh, leaves the hand again. And you can see we get a boolean here from user. So if the progress was actually changed by the user, we want to check if that is the case. And if it is, we use our set current player time to text view function again and pass progress to long to long. So we get this progress here from this function. And I think we don't need those parentheses here. Yes. So the errors are gone. And that is actually it here. And I actually noticed before recording this video that I forgot to call an important function um, in a previous video that we didn't need till now, but now we do, um, which is actually here in our music notification manager. You can see this new song callback, which is a Lambda function that should just be always called when a new song is when basically a new song starts. Um, and we don't call this here. I want to call this in any of these functions here in our description adapter. For example, here, just call new song callback like this. I'm really not sure if this is the optimal way, but this is the only place that I found that is actually called whenever our current song changes. So either if we skip the song, if we um, just if it just plays and then afterwards the next song plays. Um, this was the only place I found where this was um, up, uh, called for every song basically. Um, if you find a better way then it would be cool if you write that in the comments. Uh, but this is actually a way that works. It comes with a little bug that I won't fix in this series here. That is just whenever we switch a song then the, the TV song duration um, gets like 47 minutes or so for a very short amount of time and then gets updated with the real time. You will see what I mean. Um, a way to definitely fix this is if you save the uh, the song duration for every song in your database. But I just didn't want to do this for this series because then you would need to um, check how many milliseconds each song is actually long. Save that in your database. You can do that and then you just save that as an additional metadata item for each song. That would definitely be the cleanest way to do it. But I'll leave it like this for now here. And if we now run this app, then we should be able to see a fully working app. Let's see. Play song. And you can see uh, the song duration here is displayed perfectly fine. The song position is displayed perfectly fine. We can see here, you can see uh, this text view here updates. If we drop it, then we stick to that position. 
and that just works fine. And if we now uh, go to the next song, you can see this one updates. And as I said, sometimes there's a little bug that this has like 47 um, minutes for like half a second. I don't know why, but as I said, you can. You saw that, yeah. You can fix that if you save the song duration as part of the song's metadata. Anyways, thank you so much for following through this playlist till the end. I really hope you like this. Um, if you did, then I would love to read about that in the comments because this um, project here was really a lot of work for me. Um, in the first place, it took a long amount of time to um, just build this project because it really wasn't easy to learn all that stuff. You don't find many resources about that online. And then also that tutorial just took quite some time, but I really hope it helped some of you to um, deal with media stuff in Android. If so, definitely tell me, tell me that below. Definitely make sure to subscribe to my channel and definitely make sure to like this video. I wish you an awesome day and I hope I see you in more videos in future. Bye bye.